another episode of Unboxed. I'm Alexis Chastain, and today I'm here with Tim Munsterman, the president of Digital Fleet. Today we're going to be demoing his software and technology, but prior to that, Tim, why don't you go ahead and tell us what is Digital Fleet? Sure. So Digital Fleet is a platform and app-based company. We work really hard with our customers to solve their business problems, and we use our platform to do that. Uh, we're completely cloud-based and we solve business problems around uh, telematics and workflow automation uh, type of uh, work for our customers. Uh, we, we're not a product company, which makes us very versatile in terms of what we do hardware-wise inside the cab. Um, and obviously, because we're web-based, it helps uh, the end users for dispatch and things like that to be able to access us from anywhere. So that's what we do. OK, and how long have um, you guys been available? So Digital Fleet started in 2012. Uh, we got our first customer uh, in early 2013, and we've been going strong ever since. Well, great. Well, I'm really excited to view the unboxing of Digital Fleet's technology and solutions. Um, afterwards, we're going to have a little Q&A session, but let's go ahead and get into it. All right, thank you. So in this unboxing, what I'd like to cover uh, first is the fact that our platform is hardware independent. Uh, we don't uh, pigeonhole our customers into proprietary hardware. So we allow our customers to work with us to select whatever hardware works for them in their particular uh, scenarios. And we manage our platform on the backside to be able to marry up with any of the hardware choices. Uh, we have some hardware over here that is uh, some examples. We have a Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 and a Pro Clip Cradle. We have uh, actual modems that we can wi uh, wire into the cab for telematics purposes, uh, especially with ELD and, and things of that nature that have come around uh, recently. So we have a number of hardware options to, to satisfy uh, almost all needs of our customers. Um, the first uh, thing I'd like to demo is our app that we have for the in-cab experience. Uh, one of the things we focus on uh, to a great degree is what we do for drivers in the cab, or what I call the driver experience. So we have two pillars of design when it comes to what we do on the app. Uh, one is safety. We try to make this absolutely as safe as we can for the drivers and all the minivans around the drivers. Uh, the other thing that we try to do is make this as one touch as possible because it's easy for the drivers to learn and to uh, get, get used to using and understanding the advanced features that we provide for the drivers. So at this point, we can start uh, with the uh, demo of what we have on the Android app, which is called DigiTrack. Uh, DigiTrack, I'm already logged in, and we have a ticket sitting here from a dispatch system. Uh, in, in the case of ReadyMix, there's extra products, so we, we, as a driver, he can see what extra products that he needs to grab uh, while he's getting loaded, so he doesn't have to make two trips in the yard. So it's all about efficiency. We also have the ability to do navigation, um, and that's done by being able to select routes for the ticket um, and being able to uh, launch navigation as they leave the yard. A lot of those things we can automate through statusing and through business logic that we have on the platform. We also show the driver a lot of information about the ticket itself, where they're loading out of, what the main product is, uh, what the ticket instructions are for when they get to the job site. For instance, the ticket instructions in this case would be wait for the flagger to bring you into the job site. So uh, and ticket instructions are highly important in this case. And this is, again, part of those business problems that we help to surface and solve for our customers. Uh, this particular demo is focusing on the ready mix industry. Um, we also have at the bottom uh, status buttons, or what we call workflow automation buttons. These things allow us to customize the workflow for our customers, whatever market they're in. Um, and those things are highly configurable to meet the needs of the customer, um, whether the, they're automated or not, whether the driver's able to manually trip the, the workflow, um, which ones are within the workflow itself and which ones are outside the workflow. For instance, um, I can go in here and I can choose uh, that I'm broken down or I can choose um, that I'm some other status outside the workflow of the ticket itself. Status. Uh, but the workflow tickets or the workflow statuses within the tickets themselves are always accessible through this bottom bar, these bottom buttons. Uh, and again, it's that one touch principle uh, or, or design pillar that we have to make sure that it's as easy to use as they can. We also have this ability to allow drivers to message. Um, they can go into the, to what we call canned messages. And again, canned messages are just a series of messages that they often have to type. It saves them from having to type them out constantly throughout the day. Um, 
uh, and they're even prompted sometimes for, for instance, leftovers. So if we would go down here and we see leftovers and we, we touch on the leftovers, it's just going to prompt us for how many leftovers are on the truck. And, and if it's just a half a yard, it's 0.5 and okay. And they don't have to type out, I have a half a yard left. What do you want me to do with it? They also have the ability to go into messaging and send a message to dispatch, so a freely typed message to dispatch for things that are outside the common um, uh, communication protocol. Uh, they can also send another truck a message if, if needed. And they can also send what we call an order message. So they can send one message to any truck uh, currently ticketed on the same order and dispatch. So for instance, if you're the first truck on the job and uh, the contractor is yelling at you because you, you shouldn't be going acro driving across the asphalt parking lot, you can send that message back to everybody else so they all, they all know not to drive across the asphalt parking lot. And dispatch knows as well, so they can update things like ticket instructions. So those are the kind of things that we solve through the app for the driver experience itself. Um, we also give the drivers the ability to uh, use what they know uh, about the city of Chicago or wherever, the, wherever their uh, known uh, driving habits are. Um, so we have the ability to, let, to, to utilize that knowledge and let them choose routes. So for instance, in this uh, next uh, version uh, that we have here, they'll be able to actually choose routes uh, for where they want to go because the fastest route may not always be the best route. You, you may want to take the shortest route in, in this case. So they, they kind of know the routes, but we give them choices and leverage their experience. Um, other than that, uh, those are probably the uh, biggest things on the app itself uh, that we allow and, and provide for the drivers. Okay, so I'm going to demo the um, platform side of what we do. Uh, we've seen what the drivers uh, get to see and use. Uh, this is what the dispatchers will log into and utilize throughout the day. Um, and I'm going to log into uh, one of our largest customers, which is Ozinga here in Chicago. Um, they allow me to use them for demo purposes, which is nice. Um, so when you first look at this, um, it looks like a Christmas tree. All the statuses for each of the truck or the workflows themselves are color coded. Uh, we do that so it's easy to see uh, what any kind of uh, truck, uh, what status or workflow any truck is in at any given time, and they don't necessarily have to go clicking on it. So um, so you can see it kind of looks very lit up from a color standpoint. Um, the other thing that we uh, do is we allow um, or we surface information like uh, estimated time of arrival or, or ETA uh, for trucks going to jobs and trucks coming back to the plant. Uh, that's highly important for dispatchers when they're trying to juggle um, you know, where to use what truck um, and who to ticket next on any particular job. So again, more workflow automation business case scenarios that we're solving for customers. So if I would click on a truck on his way to a job, um, you'll see ETA, this guy, is, his ETA is eight minutes, he's 4.6 miles away from the job site. And we actually use Google Maps and Google traffic, so it's uh, relatively on, on point when it comes to the ETAs. Because we're getting data from devices, uh, in the cab, we can start to score the driver behavior from a standpoint of how well are they driving, uh, how many harsh turns do they take, how, how fast are they taking off from a, from a light, or how, how hard are they stopping. Uh, all of those things can help to um, surface how well drivers are performing or not performing, so that you can help improve their driving habits and behavior, so you can make them safer, which makes you safer as a company. The other thing, for instance, Ozinga wanted to be able to see hospitals and clinics nearby. So we provided them with the ability to enter in all those addresses, and then we show them at a click of a button where to send a driver if a driver would you know, uh, maybe cut his finger or something non-critical. Uh, the, they can kind of direct them to a place to go that's close to where they're at. So it's just an easy way for them to communicate with their drivers and take care of their drivers in those kind of circumstances. Um, we also do some... Uh, really good things for centralized dispatch. So if you can imagine, you're dispatching a lot of vehicles, and those vehicles are spread out. Uh, you're not at the locations you're dispatching from, so that's a centralized uh, dispatch uh, scenario. Uh, we allow you to be able to, um, uh, what I call zoom in. So we're gonna zoom in on the Chinatown plant. Oops. And be able to see what's going on, then you can shift to satellite mode and zoom in and be able to see where the trucks are at at any given point inside your plant. Um, and that allows you visibility 
without actually having to be at the site. And you can leave the zoom windows up all day long. You can zoom on, in on any asset on the, on the map itself, whether it's a vehicle or a plant or a job site. So for instance, if I want to zoom in on this guy here, I can zoom in on a, a vehicle and I can, it'll stay centered on that vehicle as he's going throughout his day. And it also always shows the ETA down here at the bottom uh, so you know that he's 20 minutes away and, it, and it's constantly refreshing as he's moving along. And that's important if it's the first truck on a large order because sure enough, you're gonna get that call from the contractor saying, where's my first truck? So that allows them to be able to highlight and see those things and have it up ready for that phone call. We automate a lot of the workflows uh, based on the geofences. So when a truck leaves a plant, we know it's left, so we switch it to job. Uh, and then we send that workflow down to the app, so everything's in sync. Uh, the driver doesn't necessarily have to touch anything. Uh, same thing on the job site. Once they cross the geofence to the job site, we're able to change it to on job, and we change it on the tablet for the driver as well. So every, again, everything's in sync, um, and the driver has an opportunity then to manually do things if need be. So uh, those are probably the, the biggest features to, uh, to talk about um, on our app side and our platform side. And I think uh, with that, I think I've unboxed. Welcome back to Unboxed. Tim just finished up his demo and now I have a couple questions I'd like to ask. So Tim, if you were to give an overall summary of what the drivers and dispatchers experience have been, what would you say their responses would be? Um, well, it's, it's different responses from two very different type of users. So the response that we get from drivers is they really appreciate how easy we make it. So I think we've hit a home run on how we've designed the app for that one touch uh, uh, experience for the drivers because typically we don't necessarily have to go out and train drivers. Um, they pretty much pick up the system on their own, although we will go and train because I'd love to be on the road. So, uh, but typically they pick it up on, on their own. Uh, the dispatchers, we can actually help uh, understand the, the platform. The, 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 the platform side, the features can be more complex. So we can easily, through remote sessions, help the dispatchers to understand what's going on and to see how the features work. That's a lot harder when you have 300 or 800 drivers. So getting it right on the app side was really important to us. And I think we, we did really well there. So you do offer training then for mm -hmm. dispatchers? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. We, we do training for anybody. Um, we have documentation that kind of takes drivers through what they have to do just in case they wanted to deal with that and through documentation. Uh, but the dispatcher side, it really depends on the dispatcher, so, or it depends on the company or the customer. So if they have a collection of people that have never used tracking software before, uh, then we kind of have to help them along to understand how this works on the dispatch side. If they're going from one tracking vendor because they don't like something about their old vendor and they're going to digital fleet, uh, then they pick up on a lot faster because a lot of what happens on the dispatch side is very similar uh, depending on you know, who the vendor is. Okay. So um, we're talking about you know the user experience and getting mm -hmm. feedback. And on mm -hmm. the website, I just so happen to see that in under your name, you know, it talked about how you yourself um, have a lot of one-on-one -on -one contact with the end users, which I think for one is pretty awesome because mm -hmm. you're the president, and the fact that the president has time to do that, or the president of Digital Fleet has time to do that, mm -hmm. I think that's great. Um, but I'm curious, like how how does that? work like how do you go about collecting that you yourself you know yeah it's it's um it's actually built kind of into our strategy of what we do so i really enjoy being around people i'm not a desk person at all so i love to be on the road anyway yeah. so i i've been on hundreds of ride-alongs with drivers uh, i've been in dispatch offices uh, sometimes the best way to understand how people are using your your solutions is to watch them use it i mean it's not even a conversation sometimes it's about watching for instance the eta feature um, out of dispatch office. I'm watching all this and hearing all this communication back and forth to the drivers. One of the biggest questions that get asked uh, on uh, or by the drivers to dispatch is when's the next truck going to get here because the contractor wants to know. So we have all that information. So by observing that kind of uh, workflow uh, gap or that communication gap, where we created a button for the drivers so when they're on job um, and when they are, you know, any of those on job workflow statuses, there's an ETA button right on their screen so they can actually just touch ETA and ETA and it queries our platform and we give them all the information they need. They don't have to ask dispatch. Dispatch doesn't have to take the time off the phone call with the customer or with another customer to get all the information and send it back. So all of that's very time consuming and the driver's kind of on the spot 
right, waiting for that information. So by observing all that and putting that kind of small feature, which seems like a small feature, but it saves such time with communication, and the drivers love that feature, but I think that is hands down their favorite feature on the, on the device. So it, it just speeds up the communication and gives our customer's customer what they need quickly, and it, can, and it takes the driver off the spot. Okay. So. Um how, like, do you ever have any issues as far as like with wireless communication or anything like that? So that's a, a very important topic, and we, we always cover this when we talk to new customers. Uh, and, and the way I go about it is I ask the customers which uh, network or which carrier works best in your area, because I don't know all areas. I don't know if Verizon works best there. I don't know if US Cellular works best here. So I always ask the customer, what works best in your area? Because they typically know, because everybody has smartphones now, so they know what, when they, you know, what carriers work best in their area. So once I have that conversation with them, because remember, we are solutions driven, so um, it's that empathetic quality of asking the right questions and getting all the information that you can from the customer so we can best put ourselves in their shoes. So asking those questions like who is the best carrier keeps us out of most trouble. But you know, even in Chicago, you can go under Wacker Drive and you're going to lose signal, right? So right. there are certain circumstances where it's hard to get mobile signals out, but it's no different for phone calls or anything else. So all those networks are pretty solid and they're getting better and better, better every year. Well, I know we talked about, you're talking about what carrier's best in your area, mm -hmm. and you've mentioned what it's like here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And in the unboxing, you talked about, you know, conditions in Chicago. But are you, does digital fleet, are digital fleets, um, technology services, are those offered nat nationwide, or do mm -hmm. they plan to be, or, yeah? No, we have customers all across the U.S., so we have Texas, California, um, Indiana, uh, uh, South Dakota. I mean, so we're, we're, we're in a lot of different places in the U.S., so we can be anywhere. Okay. That's great. I mean, that is something definitely mm -hmm. people would um, like to know. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if I was, say, a company and I was looking for your services, mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, I want, I want digital fleet services now. Mm -hmm. What would be my steps as far as signing up or getting started with you guys? Well, it depends on the market. So if you're in, um, I mean, anybody can go to www.digitalfleet.com and get our contact info. Uh, call us, email us, do whatever you need. Uh, we um, can exist on all levels. We respond to email, we respond to calls. So um, most of the sales calls or, or demo inquiries always come to me anyway. And again, this goes back to the fact that I like to travel and I like, I'm a people person, so I like to get to know our customers. So, uh, so people are important to me. So if I, the more I can talk to them and get to know what their needs are, the better that I can then determine what our platform can do uh, to solve those needs. Well, great. Well, this entire presentation and this discussion has been great. So thank you, Tim, for being with us today. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks again for joining us on this episode of Unboxed. Again, we had Tim Munsterman, the president of Digital Fleet, here talking about his services. If you want to check out more on that, go to digitalfleet.com. And also, go to our YouTube channel so you can check out more episodes of Unboxed. Well, guys, we hope to see you next time.